I think what's important to be able to see here where all this damage happened is how thin is the layer of land underneath that soil that looks like land. It's really sand. We're kind of walking right into the property, kind of amazing. But we can see how deeply, you know, the sand just washed right away. I guess this was sort of the outflow of the water from Hanalei. So all this strip of houses kind of worked like a levee. But we see cars and pieces that are still there. I'm sorry to see Tom and Candy's house. He's struggling, but the point that's important here is though it looks like land, this is beach. And I actually remember when all these plants that are here, I'm not going to name the landscaper right at the moment, but all of this beach area and these plants came in and got put in front of the houses you know, in one session, like about four houses, they extended the land. And so this really was a beach, but it was, you know, the homeowners were already building when the beach got extended. So sometimes people want something really bad and, you know, they can't have it. So when this beach got extended, this used to be, all this area right here used to be where we would play with our children along the shoreline. So when people reclaim the beach to be what was on the case of the maps a long time ago, doesn't mean they're really going to be able to keep that beach area. Um, still yet, I feel for the people who have lost their homes. Actually, I'm going to walk a little bit further over here because what happened in this area, this flooded away already. Um, when they took a big tree out, there was a big monkey pod tree. And we see how far out the sand is, has filled for the pier here in Hanalei. Usually there's water all in this area. We've had so much silt run out. But this property a little bit over A couple of boats just came in. So there's still some boats going in and out shuttling, but a whole lot less. I noticed that Hanalei is real somber on May 2nd. Basically, just my experience as opposed to being vibrant and happily working together. It just feels really quiet and not a lot of bubble, not a lot of people, no buffalo boys out on the beach rounding up the buffaloes. So this area here, this was, used to have big trees in here. I said at one time there was a lot, I used to live across the way here, there had been a lot of trees. That house that we're seeing there is actually on the other side of Vecchi Road. And so this was all purchased by the county for on sort of a discount after the, like people bought it to build on it and then they pulled the big trees out and then the water came through here. Let's go to the other side. is where we've had many parties. So we can see, isn't it pretty? Still pretty. Um, sort of surprising, there are, you know, surf lessons going on and Things like that with people in this water that we know is somewhat rancid.
Okay. Crossing over. Hi, how are you guys? I was just filming a little bit. Huh. Devastating. Devastating. People ready to go out. Not sure who those people are now. There has been somewhat of a a shuttle going back and forth from Wainiha. You know, big mahalos to all these boaters who have been going back and forth. You know, taking time away from their own businesses and lives. So here was where a lot of people park. I'm gonna rinse my feet off. Actually, I probably can't rinse my feet off. It it actually feels kind of kind of slimy. A little different than just normal water. I don't know. A little bit slimy as I step through that. So we can see the foundation of the pier. We all basically know this is all sand that we're on, but we really see how much this is all sand that we're on. So it seems that we haven't been able to get around to cleaning up this area. It does smell a bit like sewage. Not super heavy, but definitely, definitely there. There's the bathrooms. There's a septic top. Okay, so again, looking at the ground underneath the road, and underneath the grass, it really is just sand. Let's see if the water works to rinse my feet. It's important to keep your feet clean. I doubt that it will, but I'm just going to try. Mm, man, it smells a lot right here. Yep, no water. Dry spigot. We go look for the black pot. See if Uncle Henry Ty Hook's black pot made it. There's the Rubbish, people paddling out in the water. normally right under there. Okay, here's Uncle Henry Ty Hook's black pot. Still here. The black pot remains in Black Pot Park. This area has obviously been recleaned, retaken care of, fixed up. 
All right, we're gonna go look at a little bit more. Again, we're in Black Pot Park in Hanalei, May 2nd, 19, uh, 2018. Oh, look at that. 2018, and so what are we? We're uh, about two and a half weeks out from the storm. And so this is where we're at at that much time moved away from the storm. Now we see how the water run under the road. This is the parking lot. You can see little traces of asphalt. It wasn't well, what we say, it wasn't well paved, but it did have black asphalt in here. So here's the boat yard area, or the boat launch that's owned by the county. This is where boats go out. Here's no, um, Namolo Kama Canoe Club. The canoe paddlers have been kind of in trying to fix it up. Here's the guest house at Tom and Candy's. Luckily still standing. I wonder if it's structurally sound. There's a downed power line. This happened to belong to friends of mine. Still out. All right, this is Veke Road. So it's probably not that easy to get in here and lift these things out. You know, that's a big complaint that's there, a valid complaint that it seems like a long time that that's been sitting there yet. And how do we bring it out? So this is Veke Road, this is across the street. Even here further back, we can see that right underneath the sand, I mean, right underneath the grass, the sand, we see the roots of the trees. This brings up really important questions of what gets sold or built on even when they put these big concrete footings in. You know, I think that one thing that happens as we do our planning, one property impacts the next. There's our old canoe club, Hanalei Canoe Club. Used to paddle there for years. It was pretty wonderful and decades ago. And then the replacement canoe club a little bit further down the way. This, all this is property under consideration um, for purchase. Some of it probably already has been purchased by the county, but there are pieces out here that are part of the, the county purchase consideration for that $5.6 million. Now, when the, gen when the plan had come out for the park, most of North Shore were really opposed to it Partly because they know this is a flood zone and that, you know, it will um, wash out. You know, you certainly can't have campgrounds in here. And when the people come from Oahu and do a beautiful plan, you know, if they only see it on a sunny day, they're not going to really, really be able to be able to tell. I think I should go back and not trespass on anybody's real property here. Otherwise, I would walk us all the way through here. But I don't 
don't feel really right doing that. But here, power lines, water lines, all broken. So this is what we have to think about when we're doing our building. It's important. structure under the soil. In today's Garden Island there was an article about, I think Kayana Hall, the Deputy Director of Planning, was cited a lot in there about possibly not allowing people to rebuild here and considering what happens and So this is a, a look at what is what is going on here. All right, but still Hano Hano Kahanale, still gorgeous, still beautiful, still beloved, but deeply damaged right now in this area. <laughs> 